Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm Ben from Universal Audio and welcome to another Luna Office Hours live stream. Uh, now you may notice uh, we're not in our normal uh, video studios. Uh, that's because like many of you, we are locked down at home, staying safe, staying indoors uh, and washing our hands. Just always, always be washing the hands, guys. <laughs> exactly. So uh, hopefully you guys have already heard the news, hopefully you got the email, saw the social media posts, but uh, at long last, Luna has arrived. We are, uh, we are in full Luna mode right now, uh, and the purpose of these office hours is we want to be talking to you guys, uh, showing you how to use Luna, giving you guys ideas, showing you tips, tricks, uh, just a little bit of everything about that. But of course, uh, you know. It's no fun to just do this as a one-man show. So I brought along a couple of friends this morning. Or morning for me, probably afternoon and evening for you guys. Uh, Tom, late morning. Uh, yeah, late morning. Yeah. Late morning. Uh, so uh, I've got Tom and Drew. Uh, why don't you, uh, Drew, do you mind introducing yourself? Sure, sure. Uh, my name is Drew Mazurk. I'm a technical marketing specialist for Universal Audio. Most people know me uh, as as Drew at UA. Uh, I am uh, handle our forums and sort of uh, build all of our communities on social media platforms and focus on the technical content. And uh, super excited to be here and, and showing everybody Luna. So thanks for having me. Awesome. Uh, and and the whole the the man who's actually holding down the fort for us uh, over there in England, uh, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, it's 4 p.m. So apologies if anyone watched us last night and I said three, but it's an hour later. <laughs> it's 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. for the European dudes who are over there, like Amsterdam and wherever. Nice. Great. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think a good place to start, you know, we, we covered some a bunch of cool stuff yesterday with Lev and Connor. Um, and one of the first places that we started uh, the whole broadcast was kind of showing people what the download and install process is like, uh, especially because you know, there, there's that added iLock component to getting up and running. Uh, but the whole idea is that we, tr we, we wanted to make that process as seamless and easy as possible. Uh, so Drew, would you actually, let's just take a few minutes here for people who are just getting sure. introduced to Luna, uh, and show them kind of what that download and install and authorization process is like and, uh, show them how easy it is. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me share my screen and, uh, go full screen with this yet. Yeah, I've noticed online some people having, you know, some issues with that. I think, I think our, our massive user base has put a little bit of a strain on the, on the <laughs> iLock server. So you know, the first thing to do is if you don't have success the first time is make sure you try again. That's always a good idea. Um, the, you know, the first thing you want to do is go over to the downloads page and you'll notice that there's a download Luna link uh, shown with that purple arrow. There's also a download for Mac, which so Luna requires version 9.11.1. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure you download that, install that first, mm -hmm. then download Luna. And then the uh, Luna process, the, the installation process um, involves dragging the Luna app into the applications folder so it's it's nice and slick it's a drag and drop installer um you don't have to do anything um you know you'll confirm there uh just in case you're wondering we've got you know this is what's getting installed um the app and the plugins and creating a, a folder for your sessions and so forth um also good to note that we have full documentation online now for luna so yeah. help that help that you audio.com this is a new thing for us which is great it allows it to be a living document so we can update it quickly. No more having to download a PDF and make sure you have the most recent version of the PDF. It's searchable and it's online. So that's really cool. Nice. Um, you know, so upon first launch, you know, you're going to log in with your UA credentials and then you're going to choose between either link or create an iLock account. We, we, we tried to make this as simple as we possibly can. And for those of you that have an existing iLock account, you're free to use that. But for those of you that just want to get up and running, you can do create and Luna handles it all for you. It 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 uh, accesses the the pay servers. It makes the account. It auto assigns a password uh, using your UA email account. And so it's super simple, super easy. And it even launches the cloud session. So all in one fell swoop, you're up and running with the minimum amount of fuss as we hope. Um, and then uh, if you want, um, you know, then you just then you can log back. You can log in, and you'll need to link your iLock account, which is super easy. You've got your username and your password. You're going to click authorize. And that's if you already, this is if you already have a iLock account, you would do the link and then the create is if you don't have one, you just hit right. create, it happens magically in the background. And then actually Luna just starts after that. Yeah. Like there's, yep. there's no, uh, you don't have to download iLock license manager or, uh, or do any extra configuration for it. The, 
the licenses are automatically added to an account yep. and they're automatically activated on your cloud session. And then as long as you're working on your computer with the internet, you're good to go. Yep. And if you decide you don't want to do the cloud, you're, you're free to be, you can go over to, um, you can go over to uh, recover your password or change your password, and you can you can administer this account just like you could with anything else. If for those of you that don't want to use the iLock Cloud, you can put it. You can move the the authorization to your physical iLock. It's a uh, it's all super um, easy and and hopefully straightforward. By the way, this is all true for the uh, Luna extensions and Luna instruments. They're all authorized and managed from within the manage page of Luna. So we're trying to make everything as super simple and easy as we can. Nice. Um, and I think that, that that about does it for that, right? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I mean it yeah. is it is as easy as that, and um, yeah, if if you guys are cool. have, if you have any, any you know a lot of times I saw some of the bugs that were coming through for people yesterday, and it was a lot of them were as simple as like restarting the machine or restarting yeah. Luna. Um, you know, you never know. It's amazing, yeah, well, right? it's amazing what a power cycle does. You know, I know, right? And you know, I'm, my I've got a, a really large and crazy system over here so sometimes it takes two boots for it all to uh and, and you know plus i'm on a hackintosh so that just adds a whole nother uh world you of hurt rebel. i know no, yeah. <laughs> i'm just i'm brave i'm a brave nerd yeah brave, what it is. brave. <laughs> <laughs> great well uh awesome thanks drew for uh for kind of walking people through that and uh yeah, yeah my pleasure the uh so everybody we're, we're kind of seeing seeing stuff uh, fly by here in the chat so f you know feel free to be asking questions uh we both all of us are kind of Checking in on the chat, but we also have dedicated people who are uh, there responding and trying to help you guys in the chat. Uh, yeah, it's so, going really fast already. I know, because uh, you know this—the whole purpose of us doing this is not just to talk to ourselves, but is to be hanging out with you guys and answering questions and making sure you guys are having fun and making some great music inside of Luna. So, to that effect, uh, Tom, I believe you've got a—you've uh, got some sounds, you've got a session, and, and you're going to show us how to how music gets made. Yeah, yeah, let's take it through. We'll start with shape from the beginning. So I'll just share my screen here. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Everyone should have this. There we and go. We do. Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So let me just hop into Luna here. So um, this is your when you boot Luna for the first time and you obviously go through the, the login screen that Drew's just, Drew's just explained with the iLock linking, etc. This is what you come to. So this is the create page. So you can see here you've got some videos. We've got Matt Peterson's videos explaining kind of how to get running in Luna and navigating the basics of the application and there's some you know news stories effectively and links you can click out to um, and then you've got your create dialogue uh, box for sessions so you could name your session for example import from an AAF which I think we'll show in the next couple of days right Ben yep and then you've got things like create your session tempo and what I love here is you've got a tap tempo button so if you're jamming on the guitar already and you're like oh, I want to record you can just tap that pad and effectively like fall into a session that's going to match kind of the groove you've got in your mind so a lot of people play freeform without having to be rigid on the metronome so I, I really dig that feature yeah you can set your time signature and then you've got your recent projects here for example so i'm actually going to go ahead and open this one i've kind of pre-made like a for the guys watching the uk guys that know this we've got this show blue peter right and it's like here's one i made earlier so there's a little <laughs> bit of that going on um just to save my own bacon basically but um you know i'll start blue, I'll go to that blue pizza huh blue pizza blue and pizza. bacon yeah <laughs> yeah, man. Blue Peter was like a crafting. It was like, I guess it was a children's show that would uh, encourage you to learn new skills and craft oh, okay. and things like that. But they'd always, like I was saying earlier, if you like matchsticks, glue a load of matchsticks to make a house or something, they'd be like, <laughs> it would be take about 10 hours. So instead of showing you that on, on camera, they would just pre make one. Oh, that's that's kind of the deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just to sort of go through some other screens that are here, I suppose it's useful for people to know that that diamond logo top left is actually what's going to get you back and forth between these effectively like discover, manage and settings pages in your sessions. That's like the toggle button to go between mm -hmm. setup and your project. Do, do you mind just clicking through? Yeah, let's click through these other panes real quick for people who haven't seen these before. Um, so this is discover, yeah, where you can actually see all your instruments, right? And all yeah. the things you can find well, in the UN. And this is one of, this is one of the new, you know, this a new feature that if you uh, if anyone's here has used iTunes before, this is, you know, similar we're we're kind of starting to grow our own app store in a sense where you can buy UAD plugins, Luna extensions, Luna instruments. Uh, so you can purchase them right here, but more importantly, notice all all of the the Spitfire instruments here have got a demo button. Uh, and that's true for all Luna instruments and all Luna extensions is that you can do 14-day trials of all of them. Um, you know, we Rather than you know getting noise or some sort of weird limitation, we want you guys to actually try out the full thing for two weeks, see if it's the right vibe for you, 
Um, and then you can purchase and handle everything all inside the app automatically authorizes and it's good to go. Um, so it's yeah, it's super cool. In fact, those Spitfire instruments are like a surprise part of the launch really, aren't they? Because we'd obviously announced at Nam the mini Moog, uh, the Ravel piano, the Neve summing and the, the studio tape that's integrated as lunar extensions, lunar instruments. But then these three Spitfire libraries are just, you know, world-class. Yeah. Recorded at Air Studios, uh, woodwinds, brass, and, and chamber strings that let you do scoring, and there's bundles for these. So, so it's an epically big V1 launch. <laughs> it really is. They, yeah. yeah. Well, and it's cool too. Well, when we get into the session, like I know you, you were showing me that what you put up in uh, Shape earlier, and it's great because these are the full, you know, the full paid for editions that are premium and uh, have all the different articulations and uh, expressiveness. Uh, but included inside a shape are basically the you know the quote unquote the the demo versions of those which are you know less articulations a little bit less uh, features to be able to play with but it's pulling from the same sound source so you're still getting the Spitfire quality uh, strings brass and uh, woodwinds uh, all for free inside a shape which is just it's uh, it's incredible and Ben yeah, your what, video what, with, sorry, sorry, oh sorry Tom but your video with uh, Dave. He actually, you can, if anyone wants to hear them, they can find that on YouTube, right? Because he did, you guys did some mm -hmm. segments with those Spitfire instruments, right? Yep, absolutely. Cool. Oh, yeah, that's a monstrous demo. Shout out to David Bolt. What a monster keys player. He's such a beast. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he's, I'm going to make, make me look very bad today, Dave. <laughs> uh, nonsense. Well, and he, uh, the, if you guys, if you want to hear more of uh, Dave's amazing playing, especially the show off of Ravel and Mini Moog, uh, if you go to uaudio.com slash Luna, um, down in, in the, the play, the examples that are on that page there, if you go to the, scroll down to the instruments, uh, hit play on there. Those are all new demos of both those instruments that give you a really good idea of some of the width and, uh, and depth that you can get out of them. Awesome. Yeah, nice. So, so finally manage. we've got the manage page here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this is where you can download your content, for example. So I actually haven't downloaded all of those gigabytes of yeah. Spitfire content yet, but you know, but, uh, Another really important thing I saw some people asking about this yesterday. Uh, you can go back to manage there for a second. Oh, uh, nice. The little dot 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 at the end of like shape or shape expansion. This is actually where if you say you do have a laptop or a smaller hard drive, you can actually move your library off to an external drive. Um, a really important note that we that uh, is that you you do want this to be on an SSD if possible. Um, I mean. You're just going to have a much, much better experience if this is on an SSD, whether it's internal. When for Ravel, it's required for Ravel, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the the way these engines work is they work much more efficiently when they are you know able to quickly ask, access all the samples, um, as well as moving them into your RAM. So, uh, yeah, just make sure you're moving the stuff on the SSDs. If you do want to move it around, uh, we highly recommend getting like an external SSD so you're getting the full uh, full experience. Yeah, that could be on Thunderbolt or USB three or something, couldn't it? Mm -hmm. But um, which is probably worth mentioning as well. The the with the nine eleven dot one launch, we've now got Catalina support. So if you're even if you're just using Apollo or UAD and you need Catalina support, that's there now. So yeah. you know, push forwards with that, but also go download Luna and check it out. <laughs> Hell yeah! Um, and then we've I think we've recommended uh, an i seven processor, sixteen gig of RAM, and an SSD as like a an ideal spec to run Luna in the instruments, right? Yep. Yep, absolutely. This is super cool, this page. And then there's the settings page, finally, which is actually exactly like the Apollo console settings page you'd have been super familiar with, where you can set things like DSP pairing, which was a feature we did a while ago to give us more processing with two shark, shark chips in a row, which is exactly a lunar feature, really, to allow us to do the record and playback effects that we'll talk about in a bit. And then there's things like the IO matrix, um, where you know things like adding virtual channels and stuff is uh, useful because then we use those for this arm mode, which we'll get to when we're playing things like software instruments, nice. uh, et cetera. So there we go. So I'll just open up this uh, project here. Nice. We need a demo one. It's like en enough settings. Let's hear some music. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> this is all the like snooze, snoozy stuff. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you have to go through it though, don't you? You've got you to do. look at that mm -hmm. in the beginning. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people too who, uh, yeah, whenever I open up an app for the first time, the first thing I inspect is like, what are, what are some of the preferences and settings and, and you know, basically what do I need to turn on, turn off to have kind of a customized experience? Yeah, exactly. I mean, so it's probably worth taking through the, the window. So obviously you can see that's now how you toggle back and forth with the diamond logo mm -hmm. between your settings and the project. Project wise, I know this is one of the big ones just to get through it. You've got the timeline view here and then the mixer view. And that's a command equals shortcut to get through those. But you can also use these buttons here just to get started if you're just trying to get your way around Luna. Nice. There's some cool view panel stuff. So we've got a tracks view on the left, a focus strip. So if you if you want a one screen workflow where you can access, you know, Unison 
or instruments or whatever all the way through whatever's available on that particular channel strip you can do that right here in that one window there's some other cool stuff where you could also create new alternate windows with this function up here which is uh, shift command uh, equals and that will let you run like two monitors but you could have different mixers up for example so you could have like a mixer that's just going to show you your buses and then another one that shows you for example like the instrument tracks or whatever you've set up as views and things like that so it's nice. kind of cool i think i'm pretty yeah. sure that's how the, yeah, the multi the multi multi monitor workflow is really cool, and yeah, you're gonna have them either mirroring each other, or you can have them set up so they're kind of working independently. So if you want, you know, your whole drum, uh, you know, say you had 50 tracks of drums in a session, you can have a dedicated window just for those, and then have the rest of your mix over on another one, or you could do, uh, you know, mixer on your main screen and your timeline up on a big screen. Um, it's it's infinitely customizable, which is really cool. Yeah, I think that's quite unique to Luna as well, which is super cool for people that are multi-screens or have, you know, like particular workflows, scoring mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's cool. And then you've got show hide tracks, which I'll actually bring these tracks up in a bit, but I thought we'd go through creating a track. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. It opens up with a main mix uh, already there, so your master mix. Nice. Um, I've actually changed the color and relabeled it because I'm super particular. But <laughs> I, I, love, I, love the way, I love the white color for it too. It's good. Yeah, I have, I have a color coding like thing already. <laughs> <laughs> but so, you know, uh, command shift N to create new tracks, you have this new tracks dialogue. And this is something that I know Connor was really uh, big on sort of explaining in, in yesterday's video is just this focus browser on the left, which is going to come up when you want to create tracks or you're loading plugins, creating sends. You've got dialogue boxes that you can navigate either with the ability to search. For example, you've got this uh, text box you could type in where you've got all the sort of uh, dialogues you'd expect. So again, um, the ability to, if we're down here, for example, select what type of track you want. So you could go uh, command up and down arrow to go between an audio track or an instrument track. You've got formats as well. So that's uh, command left and right arrows to do mono stereo tracks. And then just up and down arrow itself to do track numbers. So if you wanted to make eight tracks, for example, you could just do that right there and get ready to record drums. But I thought what I'd start with is the instruments because I know we've had a lot of people asking about layering sounds and shape and because that's the included instrument. I thought I'd start with just an overview of that, and then we'll I'll pull up what I've just done. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so just make a, an the, instrument track there. Yeah, shape is a it's a it's a great place to start, and especially for when you you know just want to kind of find sounds quickly, get you know get into the songwriting portion of it. This is the this is the best tool for that by far. Yeah, and this one's this is all free. Shape and the shape expansion all free. There's, I've seen some people online being a little confused about what it comes with, what it doesn't come with. So this this is all uh, all free content that comes with Luna. Yeah, you know what? There's so many amazing sounds in it. it, and it, the sound quality of it is what got me immediately. It's just it's like properly record ready. I know that sounds like sort of hyperbole a little bit, but it's not. It's like the, the drum sounds are done. I didn't even need to EQ a lot of this stuff. These mm -hmm. kick drums and things in, in it are just amazing. Well, and, um, and the and those built-in effects too. Like uh, I know you'll you'll get to those as you kind of add start shaping up the sound. But man, like the way that they implemented those, on top of the fact that those are in fact UAD effects, uh, kind of sunk in there it's uh it's incredible yeah so even if you're using even if you're using sonic couture or ujam or whoever else the the content creator is they're going to sound different and be usable in a different way with shape because it's now paired with our effects which so it's a unique experience for sure mm -hmm. yeah definitely so there's a couple of other shortcuts i thought i'd mention too because this was a new one that i found just by using it was if you hold down command shift i for example that will make an instrument track on an, on its own so you don't even need to go to the dialogue box if you don't want to do the command shift n and go through the whole selecting audio or instrument oh you nice can just do it right there and then obviously you can choose to um, delete those tracks if you don't need them. So that was cool. But when Shape loads up, you've got this piano immediately um, here. We should have audio. audio. What's yep, going I, can, I can hear you. Yep. Oh, yeah. I know why. No, I know why, because we're monitoring off our cues, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So I need to do that, and then I can hear it. <laughs> here we go. There, yeah. It's super low octave. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Lower, baby. Yeah, yeah. So we've got this wonderful kind of light version of Ravel just in here already. It's beautiful, you know. For writing, you can start with just that. And then we've got things like the ability to send it to some effects. So in the first engine, you could have, um, let's say, hall reverb. And then you just turn up this effects one control. It's so it's easy. It's really beautiful. Yeah, so easy, so creative. And then I, what I love is you can start getting really creative with these effects and just do things you wouldn't normally do to a piano. Like we could flange it, for example, or the rotary speaker. That's super cool, which is actually a, 
an interesting one for you as well because i don't think we've but the first time we've done a rotary speaker effect it is yeah mm -hmm. And I, you said yesterday, when you actually go all the way up to the top of this knob here, that becomes 100% wet feed into that effect. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So the yeah, the way that FX1 and FX2, uh, when I was first showing how shape works, I was just like, this. why has no one done this before? Because what you're able to do is from about zero through, I think it's like one or two o'clock somewhere in there, <clears throat> it's a send, you know, it's in a send uh, kind of a wet dry sort of scenario. So you can, you know, be adding to the hall or... <clears throat> sorry adding into the rotary speaker uh but then as you go further it starts becoming fully uh fully wet so right now fx2 is running entirely through the rotary speaker but before it's doing that you know the it's hitting the hall a little bit and this is where that button up at the top or sorry the knob at the top where you see fx1 to fx2 this actually allows, allows you to do some chaining together so uh, you know, you could be sending the, he's now sending the hall also into the rotary speaker. Uh, so you're getting that whole effect applied to both the piano and this. So, so uh, right there, Ben, that effects one is probably what 60, 40 wet feeding into the rotary at a hundred percent. Exactly. In series. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's such a cool, that's such a cool thing just to be able to create your own sound. Like it was a really beautiful Steinway piano, Ravel light. And now it's a distorted rotary speaker piano thing. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Super creepy, right? Spooky. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, you know, in the true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I made earlier. Boom. <laughs> so um, <laughs> on this track, and this is a cool thing. So to show you how to create MIDI, you know, just to get going, obviously we could record. So, you know, in this case, I've got, um, if I just show you this instrument track, we've got shape loaded in the instrument shot and instrument, instrument slot. That could be an audio unit's instrument. So it could be, you know, in this case, if we went to a sign, you'll see that. Uh, to an assign, assign an instrument, you can select our own, but anything else you've got installed. This is the focus browser. So for example, if I knew I wanted the fab filter down there, I could just type F, FF and it would filter down already. And then you can use the down arrow and boom, I've loaded it. And now I've got a, a completely different thing loaded, which is really quick. So I'm not having to use the mouse to do that really. Once you've gone into assign for the instrument slot, you're already on the keyboard focus. So it's really quick. Yeah. I also love is you've got undo there as well, so I can actually just go back and bring back <laughs> needed. <laughs> well, and that's, otherwise that'd have been a disaster. Yeah, man, that that the the way that shape is, uh, or the way that Luna handles undo is it saved my butt multiple times already. Of yeah, being able to like do any move that you make, whether it's changing a part, changing a parameter, like everything that you do inside of Luna is automatically saved, but then it's also uh, undoable, so you can always get back to where you were. Oh yeah, the fact that it's stored in a database and you could even close your session and come back sort of a week later and undo the last thing you did to sort of check whether you were happy with that vocal up, vocal down or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's 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 huge. Yeah. You know, and also the um instantiating inserts and then removing one or deleting a track from your project and then going, Oh no, I want that track back. <laughs> there is I've been obviously facing this, I'm sure you have for like the last fifteen years, and then you, you can't do that in certain things. So yep. tools Luna, you could just go undo and bring the thing back. And that, that's that has saved me when i've trashed a lead vocal i needed you know <laughs> why were you trashing it why were you, i was like why were you trashing a lead vocal to begin <laughs> with sir <laughs> properly ocd is now like my session's tidy <laughs> but um i thought what we do is have a look at kind of just what you can do on one of these instrument tracks so we've got shape loaded at the top there that's my midi interface just picking up you know midi coming in you've got midi effects if you want to add stuff like the arpeggiator we've released as well which is included in luna which i'll, I'll actually use on a different sound and then below that, you could obviously instantiate tape if you wanted to have the tape effect, the lunar extension built in to play your instruments through when you're, well, to listen through them um, when you're mixing. But what's really worth sort of noting is when you're in performance mode, um, effectively an arm, this button at the top here, which is in this workflow panel for recording that pops down, this orange arm button, which you can also turn on here in this almost like navigation strip in the mixer, that puts everything into... Um, our lowest latency Apollo console type workflow. And that's what everyone's known and loved, right? You previously would be used to using console here. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess I can share that screen for a sec, maybe. Can I? Oh, no, I'll, I'll stay in Luna. But, you know, if you're used to using console, then you, you have the unison slots, you have your inserts, you have your virtual channels. What you do with instrument tracks in Luna is as soon as you have one loaded, if we go into record here and we're in ARM, this effectively is now feeding a virtual channel. So if I wanted to put UAFX on here, you know, like play it through an RMX 16, mm -hmm. I can do so. And it's, you know, it's running in real time with 
no latency so I can play that sound straight through. And that's really what ARM's all about. It's giving you that feel of, you know, just hardware instruments effectively and, and yeah. And the Azure. Well, and that's, and that's the great thing too is, uh, you know, I know that before, uh, before we launched Luna, there was a lot of people kind of wondering like, how does it interact with AU instruments and AU effects? Um, and the great part is that AU instruments work just the same as Luna instruments in this regard. So, you know, if, even if you had the Fab Filter Twin pulled up right now, put a UAD effect on it, you're still getting that that near zero latency experience. Um, with uh, it's it's kind of a, this is the beauty that Luna offers is that it's doing all the hard work in the background to be able to give you as low latency experience as possible, uh, which for almost everything is you know, less than the distance between a human and a stage monitor. Uh, which yeah, is, yeah. It's just fact, fantastic. all the plugins chain, all the UA plugins and series are chaining as well in there that you've just got the ability to process and sound design whilst mm -hmm. you're writing, right, which is huge. Whereas previously trying to run UAD plugins on a software instrument in another DAW was quite tricky, um, oh, yeah. you know, for, for performance reasons. But now in Luna, it's that's all really easy to do. So I thought what we could do is like look at how you layer a sound in shape. So I, you know, I put this thing together, which was kind of, it's based around playing that chord ultimately. And so I used a pipe organ from Spitfire here, which is just loaded up. Um, and it, you know, I'm gonna stack some sounds, but first up we'll use the effects here. So uh, effects one, if I turn it on is a tremolo. So I've actually synced that to the tempo of the project and that's set, sent very much mostly to that effect. So we're getting a lot of tremolo on, onto that pipe organ. And then uh, with effect two, there's this uh, reverb, which I'm not actually using on the organ as such, but it comes into play on some of the other sounds. So I thought what would be cool is putting this Mtron flute in there so I can show you just the flute on its own. And what I love about this is you've got, you know, some panning parameters in each sort of part edit you can do, and you've got the ability to transpose. So that comes into play with the other layers. So, uh, you know, this one again is going to the reverb and the tremolo and combined with, with the pipe organ and the, the Mtron flute, we've got this beautiful pad and it sounds so organic and warm, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a beautiful then, sound. Yeah, it's, it's, I love tremolo on things because it makes it feel like it's moving quickly in the tracks. So you've got motion, right? Even though it's I'm holding one chord, it feels like there's energy, you know. But then uh, with the trumpet here from Spitfire, what I've done is actually transposed it up uh, an octave in that settings panel. So if I just solo the trumpet, you hear we've got a chord made from a trumpet effectively that's panned Pan hard left. left. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sounds cool. And it's pitched much higher. And that's also going to the tremolo. So without the effects on it, you can hear. Um, I you, you hear nothing because you're full wet. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to pull this down as well. There we go. Yeah, there it is. And then I'm hitting both of them completely to make that sound. So what's cool is that the, the trumpet itself is left, but the effects are still stereo. So it's still mm -hmm. wide, you know, but there's some like panning in there. It's cool. Yeah, I'm hearing the I'm hearing the tremolo version of it over on the left, but I'm hearing the hall version of it across. Uh, so, yeah, you're getting this really cool stereo effect. It's like a super wide sound. Yeah. And then Tom, same everyone, final one. people are saying this is dope. So you're, oh, cool. you're, being, you're being dope right now. Just That's so what know. I aim to be. That's why I'm yeah. wearing the cap. Thanks, please. <laughs> British people, are we allowed to be dope? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think you've uh, broken barriers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then there's this finally, which is this mild synth patch. Um, you know, and what's cool is you could decide to try and put that up two octaves if you wanted to, you know, uh, go that far, or maybe an octave. Mm -hmm. uh, or down. But I, I actually quite liked it because it's such a fat sound there. So that's panned right. So it's effectively the opposite half of the, the trumpet part, you know. Mm -hmm. So what you've got is this like warm thing on the right, the right trumpet on the left, and then the pulsation of the organ and the Mtron. So if you kind of take all the effects off and mute all of these first few parts, that's where you start with a nice pipe organ. Mm -hmm. And it's great if you were doing some sort of churchy type thing, that might be what you need for a film or something. But for pop music and stuff, I just love the, let's just mess Add it, it up. Adding, all the, adding the, the, the extra motion and the fill around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, um, in, again, true Blue Peter fashion, and this is something that I love. Uh, in, uh, in fact, I'll show you how to create MIDI first. So actually, if you just select uh, a portion of the track that you want a MIDI clip on, if you use um, Option Shift 3, um, then you create a MIDI clip. And once you've got MIDI here, you press E, and then you've got full MIDI editing right in, in window in, in the timeline. So you can easily double click to add notes. You know, and we could 
play and program that sound right there. You've got a velocity control here. If you click on this little mm -hmm. sort of uh, little velocity flags, I think we would call them maybe. Yeah. Uh, so here you'll see that I've got a modulation lane up at the minute, but that would be velocity. So this is where you get all of your CC parameters as well to control anything available in the instrument. Nice. And uh, it's really cool because it's like a, uh, you can double click on the track header as well to close that down if you're sort of like a really long MIDI track and you don't want to go back to the beginning of the you know clip to get that little button you can just double click here and bring it out there's quantize on there as well so we're able to you know deal with my sloppy keyboard playing because i'm not <laughs> dave lebolt but you know what i've done in, like like i say true billy peter fashion here's one i made earlier i've just programmed some chords for that sound so i'll just give you a listen to that and what, what i love here ben is that we've got versions yeah. on midi so really? not only do you have versions on audio for doing different takes and you can edit and comp, but you can try ideas and just record something. And if you don't like it, just switch to the version behind where you had your original pass, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and I know uh, I've done this a lot in the past and uh, and especially some other uh, DAWs, you really end up having to, if you want to just capture ideas and then you're not sure what you want to commit to yet, you end up having to like record all across the timeline and like, you're, you're like, 50 minutes down in the session you're like oh yeah, yeah wait no this is actually the thing i want now let me pull this back to the front delete everything else and like you end up losing the ideas losing the inspiration but more importantly you're just kind of wasting time reorganizing your session just to like start developing an idea but with versions you just create a new version with every new idea until you land on the one that you like and then that's the one that's there but you haven't lost any of your progress that that got you there yeah yeah and it's super easy as well if you wanted to for example just to double click on that and call it comp Mm -hmm. And then you could have other versions that you take, you know, oh, I just want to take that bar from here. Yeah. You can copy that and you can pop it in. And you're, you're basically editing MIDI like you edit audio. If you're used to doing that, then I, for me, that just was like huge because I'm no longer kind of feeling like I have to leave audio world to deal with MIDI, mm -hmm. which I adore. I completely adore. Hell yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll just give you a play of the, the chord progression here. It's just really, you see how evolving that is, though. And that's just one shape instrument. So what's giving it extra life is I actually recorded some automation of uh, uh, modulation onto that. So just using the mod wheel on my controller, once I program the chords, I just hit play. And then because I'm using modulation and it's controlling all the different mod parameters that's in all the different parts of shape, for example, you know, whatever this modulation might be assigned to, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're getting all that sort of like motion happening across four different sounds that are layered, blended, and sent to different effects in combinations of dry, wet, 100% wet, like as a sound design tool and how fast and immediate that thing is. Yeah. I'm, I'm super in love with Shape and the fact that it comes with Luna with all this content, gigabytes of data is, is awesome. Absolutely. So yeah, you can see how that kind of like rises and just makes that shiny. Just as it grows over the progression, you know. I love it and I love that like little, that bright top voice that kind of comes out of it, but it's supported by, you know, just this big meaty pad. It's, yeah, that's a cool sound, man. It's a cool, and you know what, it's so quick. I didn't even know what I was doing. I just went, I'll oh, start with a pipe organ, let's add some stuff. And by the time you get to the end, you're just going, ah, oh, you know what? This is cool. This is a great sound. And then you could just make hundreds of those just without really thinking. And it's kind of a cool, especially, uh, you know, in the times of, of which we're in right now, like it's a, it's a really fun way. Like if you're not sure what you're feeling, if you don't really have a concrete idea of what you want to do, but you want to do something, that's actually, you just showed people a great way to, to try things out and get started and just start thinking about ideas. It's like, uh, and you know, it's honestly part of our hope with delivering Luna to people, uh, ahead of schedule here was, Get them, get them something that they can open up and, and kind of find some inspiration in. And Shape does that so much because, yeah, you just start pulling up sounds, start layering things, add some effects. So, you know, if you play with it for sound design purposes for like five, ten minutes before you know it, you've got a musical and a sonic idea and you start making a track. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's I'm totally in love with it. It's I'm, Basically, I'm glad that it's in <laughs> Luna and right now when everyone's sort of you know, unfortunately distancing the, the ability to go and get lost in shape for a bit and, mm -hmm. and use some time exploring sounds. I'm, I'm, in, I'm loving it. You know, I haven't actually been doing this much sort of sound design for a while and it's great. It's sort of really musical. It's so organic. And, and also yeah. the sound, the sounds are what get me because it's not, it's really organic and UA, you know, like UA's yeah. analog sort of warmth and vibiness. It's in shape. And so you can really sort of bask in the, the, the sonics of it. 
Absolutely. Yeah, hopefully everybody, hopefully everybody at home is is at least got some good headphones on or go, listening on their studio monitors because this, you know, it's super, it's enveloping. You know, like the effects and the tones and and the width and the depth, as Ben said earlier, it's it's like it's super cool. So if you're not on some good headphones or monitors, get on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So then I added some drums to it with shape again. So this is the vinyl kit, which again, I'm like fully addicted to this one right now. But there's a vinyl crackle, which I've just looped up on one of the keys here. We've got some what? vocal samples what? coming down. What? Really great rolls, which I actually haven't put into this beat, but I might well put them in because that roll sample is really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, go, going all the way down, we've got keys and keys worth of, um, you know, sounds, old congas and keys samples amazing toms really fat old toms dusty snares and things like that so what i've got going on and this is really cool is uh, i programmed the hi-hat part and basically decided that i can't play drums on a keyboard very well so i hit quantize and then i programmed some stuff um mm -hmm. but one thing i wanted to show quickly ben is the swing parameters in the groove so like this mm -hmm. is the drum pattern and you've got this cool feature called fold which is just going to show you the notes you've used in the drum pattern so you get rid of the notes that you're not picking up so obviously there's like 88 or so sounds across the whole keyboard in that drum kit um but what's cool is that you can kind of uh if you just wanted to say quantize a couple of kick drums like these offbeat kicks you can shift click them just to select those mm -hmm. and then hit quantize here and you can apply a swing value just to those which i actually did already um which is like it was um i think it was those kick drums let me see i actually dragged some around in the end but yeah i'm pretty sure it was those and i just did these kicks and put them to about 50 percent swing and that's a non-destructive quantize so you can just move you know that one offbeat kick drum to be a little swung and then if you don't want to do it later on you just come back and select them again and you can remove the quantize back so that's it's like non-destructive so yeah man I, uh, after years of having to commit to a quantize like being able to have it uh, have a fully uh, undoable and or just tweakable like that is incredible yeah yeah so it's huge and so basically kind of programmed up a, a beat and then because you've got the ability to run uad effects on the instrument and no drum is complete without a distressor you know this <laughs> absolutely right, so let's pop that on and then i'll just play you the, the sort of vinyl crackles and the way it hits in so the crackles add that nice analog sort of thing as we've got a build in the intro here mm -hmm. But for the producers out there, you know, the fact that I could be using a drum pad controller to program my drums right now and put it into MIDI record and then have a distressor on them whilst I'm playing. You know, the difference with no distressor, they're great sounds. But one compressor on it. So that's like a pretty beastly sounding drum kit, you know. Well done, Tom. Well done. Thanks, man. Yeah. Just, well done, the sound designers who did shape. Seriously, <laughs> fire in this thing. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so to get a bit more sort of energy later on in the arrangement, I tracked in a uh, hi hat part, and this is again using shape for drums. Um, but with this one, I used the delay. I don't know why, but I often like delays on drums just to give it some more movement. So it's just a hi hat being sent to this stereo delay, which is tempo synced in triplets. It's cool, but what it does when it's all together is that the arrangement sort of kicks up a bit later on. You hear it's drop in now. So again, that circular swung triplets over a little bit of a swing thing going mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. i like it so then uh we've got moog bass track as well there's we've been people there. there's been people in the chat yelling moog just they're, they're, <laughs> they're just full all caps they've been desperate to hear what this sounds like okay cool well this is exactly where i went next you know i was like i've got some drums it's got to be a moog bass it's got a, so almost like a trip hop vibe right so mm -hmm. Um, this sound is meaty. It's one of the presets. So what's cool about, you know, just browsing in Luna, if you click on presets here, you can type in bass and then it's just going to show you the bass presets or just type in lead. You're going to see the lead presets. Uh, and that's just going to be an easy way. And to be honest, I know we've all said this, um, Ben and Drew, but once you start loading plugins and you know, you want the API, so you just type API and it pops up with the 550, whatever you need, or, you know, you want a bass synth sound and you just type bass. It makes the browsing for sounds so much quicker than mm -hmm. scrolling and dragging through a long mm -hmm. menu that I've, I've sort of, every time I go to something that doesn't have this now, I'm like, Oh God. Right. But at the same time, you can also just, you can select a preset and just kind of use the up and down arrows. Just keep on browsing up and down through it. And 
you know, uh, do the old, the old, uh, you know, keyboard, 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 you know, up, down, kind of going through the presets until you find something that inspires you. Yeah. And then your yeah, user, your user presets are always at the top. So like as you make presets, they'll, they'll get sorted first. So the stuff you're going to use often is right at your fingertips. Yeah, 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 totally. So what's cool with this one is we've got the um, the external input volume um, cranked into feedback mode, which was a mod you could do on a mini Moog to um, loop the headphone jack or the, one of the outputs back to the input. So effectively to the filter input and create a feedback loop, which is actually an uh, interesting mix technique you can do anyway, just sending like a kick drum back to itself on a bus and actually create like more distortion and fatness that way, like a resonance. You can do that and lots of different stuff, but to do it on the, the, the Moog, it kind of makes this really gnarly distortion. super fat sound mm -hmm. it's like, it's so tempting to like even when you have kind of a pretty sound just kicking on a little bit of that uh, oh it, it adds just the right amount of space yeah 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 definitely so i've just programmed in this bass line just to follow the chords so it just got this it starts really low you can hear how mean this move moog sorry move moog. oh back. you did it you gotta Made put five dollars five dollars in the jar <laughs> the moog bin yeah but what I love is though, so I actually played this on the keyboard. So those big glisses that are just sliding down. I'm just sliding my fingers on the keys. Mm -hmm. It just does that like nice sort of glissando-y type move thing. So when you put that in with the pads, it's just so fat sounding. Just those two sounds. <laughs> dude that sound that's this is sounding sick and uh yeah i know you pre-prepared some of this stuff but like at the same time like just the the sound quality that you're able to get so fast is incredible yeah and when you consider that it sounds good and there's just one distressor on the drums and there's a there's some layering and shape but ultimately that's what luna sounds like when you load our instruments it's mm -hmm. inspirational like i get completely lost i started making this a couple hours before we got online and it's just like Way too much fun. Oh, Way yeah. too much fun. I'm never leaving the house again. Like I don't even know if we need like when the when the when the distance thing's lifted, I'm staying in. <laughs> um, you know. So then finally, I've got Ravel going on here because I'm sure people are going to be asking about our wonderful piano. But see, I'm not Dave LeBolt, but mm -hmm. you know, I'll just uh, disable some stuff real quick on the piano here. So ooh, and move to the selected track. So there's all sorts of stuff going on. But I wanted to do something that would give the thing motion, right? So I'm just yeah. going to turn this off for a sec. You just got this nice piano. It's wonderful. I mean, it just sounds beautiful. And so, you know, put it more into the room mics than the close mics. Mm -hmm. um, but because I wanted to arpeggiate it, because, you know, I thought, well, I can't play it properly, but I can arpeggiate it. I just was lazy and copied the chords from the pad. Sound straight down to the piano track. <laughs> efficient, just, uh, Not, yeah, lazy nothing wrong and with efficient. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> properly, yeah, it's proper like MIDI, MIDI uh, sort of like composition at its finest. But I transposed them an octave higher, so I, you know, took the same chords, lifted them up an octave, and then um, they're in Ravel here. I've created this sound where I've used the reverse mix, which gives you the reverse blending in with a short length. So it's got this really nice little transient swoosh to it, mm -hmm. and then the MIDI arpeggiator effect is on it here. So. Uh, in fact, I wanted to hit enable there, sorry. So there we go. And uh, and Tom, to, sh to do that shift octave up, it's uh, it, it's shift up arrow, right? That does an octave, whereas up arrow does a uh, semitone, right? That's right. So if I select all of this, I can move MIDI notes up and down with just the arrows. And if we do shift up, down arrow, then. Super handy. That was really cool. Yeah. So that's, I mean, there's no human that can play the piano that quick. But what it sounds like <laughs> is I've, I've, I've taken a sample of some old old time arpeggiated piano that's got this weird chop in it because of the reverse. Mm -hmm. And that's just, it's sort of going back on itself, which is kind of cool. So then uh, again, just to perform it, because I was trying to sort of, to sound design, I just held the chord on the keyboard, you know, um, the ability to have like a Neve compressor on it, make it really bright and hard. Yep. And then the final piece of it, I'm, I love this, is the... Panna. <laughs> it's completely wild, but that's kind of the level of sound design you can do really quickly in Luna. And when we get to that section, 
Here we go. Sounds wicked, that like. Oh, it's so sick, dude. Thing. And, and I love the fact that you can arpeggiate a, a grand piano because I, I, a long time ago, I bought a, uh, what's it, I, in the place I worked, we bought a disc clavier. So mm -hmm. you could actually feed it MIDI to play a real piano doing stupid things that humans couldn't really play. And we broke, we broke it and we broke the power <laughs> supply in it. <laughs> by doing, um, by doing uh, something like this, didn't you? You're like, how many can it play at the same time? <laughs> yes. Like, can we do all 88 keys at once in some random thing, you know, it just sort of melted the power supply on the disc clavier. But uh, in, in, <laughs> well in Luna, we can do it. We can do it with Ravel. And, uh, uh, and you can't break it. You, you won't break it. <laughs> you can't break it. Yeah. Yeah. For real. So, I, I, you know, I think that's a cool way of showing Ravel in a way that's not a piano player doing it but a mm -hmm. producer kind of trying to make some cool sounds i love it so that's sort of uh, an overview of midi so you know you've obviously got the press the e key to be able to get into editing we can do the up down arrows to do stuff if you hold down command you get this little um these sort of this tiny um, bi-directional arrow which is velocity so if i was to just show you with the velocity popped out and selected down here um you can see that there's a white um velocity marker there on the note that I selected. Let me just move the playhead for a sec. Oh, an unlink or two. There you go. So yeah, if I'm uh, just picking up that one note, I can change the velocity just by holding down command on it. Or you can shift click a bunch of notes and do those. The other thing is trimming. So if you hover over the start of a, a note there, you can trim the start of it. And then of course, because I'm on grid, if I hold down command, I can kind of clutch off the grid effectively and be in Mm -hmm. you know. That's that's one of the most important shortcuts uh, for people to, to really grasp is uh, you don't always have to be switching the grid on and off. You can actually leave the grid on, select anything, and if you want to defeat the grid, just press command as you're doing a, a drag option, uh, and it'll mm -hmm. instantly let you get off the grid. Yeah, so you can do that on the clip as well. So say this is moving in bars right now, but if I wanted to move it off the grid, I just hold command and then I can slide it. And that's true for audio or fading or anything. So, you know, I, I actually do that. I don't ever leave grid or snap effectively up here so this is where you set your grid value obviously i do change that mm -hmm. um but snap i generally just leave this on here so orange there nice. and then i'm just holding down command to like get in and out of the grid basically awesome so yeah that's the kind of beat so i thought we'd finish up by looking at like an audio track um and the yeah, Tom, we, oh. we want to hear you play some guitar man oh damn this is a bit where i was dreading now <laughs> it, should be fine. it should be fine it should be fine uh so effectively i've already got a track created but just to show the process if we went uh command shift n here one audio track boom i'd make a track here it's already there you can name it um you can select inputs for example so if i go here on the audio track you'll see i've actually labeled my inputs so this is cool because it remembers so if you if you never leave your studio mm -hmm. always having one input called vocal mic and one called di guitar and it's permanently hooked into my x4 here um you know that's just going to remember that yeah. and what's cool is then you can select your inputs just by using this list or again like ben says up and down arrows just very quickly or even search if you've got like a huge multi-apollo rig with four x16s and you're in a big tracking facility and you know that channel 48 coming off your console is you know permanently going to be like room mics or a listen mic or something that's up you can always label them so you could easily just type listen or in this case like i could find adat and just bring those up mm -hmm. so i adore i adore that feature so yeah we select a guitar as an input for me which is the second input on my x4 here and then as soon as you enter arm mode and that's the crucial thing here this is a completely dsp channel strip so it's running like it would in console mm -hmm. we've got well and the and the best thing is it's just like the console experience except now it's just happening in line in luna happening inside your session you don't have to be going back and forth between two applications to set up unison and uad effects yeah yeah and the fact that it remembers them so for example like in fact let's just um you know on this track i'm going to set it up and i'll pretend that i'm going to do a neve preamp and do some direct you know just mm. like an old funk, funk thing mm -hmm. on that track that's what's remembered but then i'll bring up my guitar track i already created with the here's one i made earlier <laughs> using the same input you see here mm -hmm. i'm going to hit record enable here and it's bringing up a completely different chain oh, i know so this cool. is one of one of our favorite features right uh-huh yeah. And now you can unrecord enable this one and go back to the other one. And now I'm gonna it's loaded up the Neve. I'm going to do a full segment on that, Tom. And one of the cool things that people don't realize is this is a this is a real good workflow uh, enhancement. Is it, let's say you have an arrow and an octo satellite, you can keep your arrow loaded up with 
maxed out DSP chains. And then every time you unarm the track in Luna mm -hmm. and arm another track, that that DSP chain is moved to the octo for you. So it's a huge workflow because not only when you unarm a track, not only is the chain rebuilt, but the previous chain is the DSP is relinquished. So it's a super amazing it's a, it's a big improvement in workflow for sure oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah it's huge and you know like you say being able to uh, have a vocal mic already connected and then plug in and out a front panel guitar when you need it and just have tracks already in your template session if you wanted to make one where you had this is what i need for my vocal chain and once you set it you make it you know whenever you want to record a vocal track you just arm that vocal track in your template and boom you've got your vocal chain and then the next day you come back to your bass di track or whatever i i adore that especially with like twin users and arrow users where you're maxing that you're absolutely bang on mm -hmm. so what, what i'll do is i'm gonna i'm gonna just trash that track that i made just to go back to the one that's actually pre-made um so like i'll just take you through the the effects that's on it and then um i'll try and play some stuff <laughs> nice yeah so i mean clean di on there I've put in a TS overdrive in the unison slot, so effectively getting some gain like it would be going through a, a sort of like um, just like going, pedal, you know? just like a tube screamer. Yeah, so we've got all that mid rangey kind of clip stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. Can't zoom. Leave. <laughs> How do I get that little bar going and zoom? You know when you go to the top of the screen and Zoom brings its little drop down. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a there's a handy shortcut inside of uh, Luna that uh, if you do Shift W, it just oh. automatically hides any open plugin windows. Ben bringing the noise there, that works. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a great shortcut. Okay, Shift W. Shift Thank W. You. Yep. Amazing. So then I've used the uh, in the record effect slots, and it's worth mentioning here you've got um, a unison slot and five record effect slots. So we're going to commit to. Like you can commit to up to five processing elements there, all running UAD without any noticeable latency because it's all running like it does an Apollo console on a DSP. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's going to be recorded to disk. But you've also got the ability in the inserts below that to have another four effects as playback effects. So we've actually upped the processing capability from, say, console where you had five potential you know, choices and you could either commit one or all five. Mm -hmm. um, now you can actually commit five and have four for nine total which is pretty crazy for vocal tracking. It right? really, it totally is, and you know, obviously, the when you're in ARM mode, uh, this is going to be subject to the DSP pairing uh, limitation. You know, so if you load a 1073 Fender and a 480, you're probably going to have a bad time. Uh, but if you, uh, you know, if you're kind of keeping keeping mindful of how many, uh, how, you know, the the weight and the DSP usage of all the plugins, uh, this is you know really where. Kind of having the being able to commit to sounds. This is what Drew was speaking to with the arrow. Is like, uh, you know, by re using the recorder effects, you're actually being much more efficient. You're com a you're committing to a sound, which is just like, a, you know, kind of a nice thing to do. Uh, to, you know, mm -hmm. say I like the sound. I want I want this to be it forever. But from a uh, from a processing point of view, yeah, it allows you to. Uh, be more efficient on the mixing process because you've already done half the, you know, if you already do the heavy lifting on the way in, then you have a lot lighter lifting when it and a lot more fun when you come to mix. Oh, for sure. I, I adore committing to stuff. Yeah, mixing um, so, should be fun not and, and inspiring and not re-engineering the recording session. That's always been my view, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because like the sounds in our instruments, are, they don't need a lot of processing and they already sound incredible. So I feel like you should track your sources, audio coming in the same way so that your mix session is like as clean as this, the stuff that I've got here. One distressor on some drum loop, you know, that would be great. That's yeah. the goal. Yeah, if anybody, so, yeah. if you ever heard Tom, you know how like there's a lot of those old multi-tracks floating around you know you whatever you get a stevie wonder or doobie brothers or whatever all that and like you just turn up the faders and it's like 80 percent of the mix just turning up the faders it's mm -hmm. like it's a it's a yeah. those guys took so much care in in tracking you know or they just took a lot of care over the vibe of it even if like technically you hear some gremlins yeah. on those multi-tracks exactly it yeah. sounds good yeah. so yeah. some of my favorite ones are the same to the percussion tracks which you can tell they slam through the 1176 because it's like 50 percent conga and 50 percent the guy <laughs> grunting like, <laughs> yeah you just hear just him as like, much room noise yeah and breathing uh -huh, yeah exactly <laughs> That's amazing. There's a drummer I work with. He grunts quite a bit when he plays, and it's brilliant when I pull up all the room mics, and you can just hear him going, mm, "Yeah." It's a bit like Bonham did it as well, I think. Yep. 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 All right, Tom, Man. stop stalling. Start playing guitar. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. He's got, he got one more effect busted. on here. What, what else have we got? Busted. 
Well, so because, you know, I think it's with this track, I thought I'd try and get a bit of motion in the ocean, uh, so to speak. I've put in the uh, the Moog filter here. Nice. As a kind of like uh, envelope filtered, you know, low pass filter that's kind of moving off the player. It's super funky, which is cool. But, uh, you know, the guitar, guitar being that dry is, un- is sort of unnerving to me. So <laughs> I've create, created a bus. But just to show you what you can do here, if you're in the sends uh, part of the mixer here, mm-hmm. if I click on the plus sign here, you can actually create a bus right here just by clicking on the create bus plus in the focus browser. Nice. So you could make a bus. You could have it have Neve summing on it or not, for example. You can name it there. So in fact, let me do that again so people can see. So um, so there I want to create a bus. You can choose to have Neve or not. You can name it. So here I could call this Reverb, for example. And that's how you can create a bus directly from the send dialog. Alternatively, um, you can actually... A refurb, I called that. That's spelled incorrectly. That's brilliant. These, uh, <laughs> these, uh, these are... These Mac uh, MacBook Pro laptops with the flat keyboards. <laughs> that's I've what, made yeah, so that's... many typos. It's ludicrous. <laughs> yeah. It's like you know, it's all bets are off as to what the word actually is. Uh-huh. Yeah, blame the keyboard. Uh huh. Oh, dude, it's serious. <laughs> so, uh, so Command Shift B will also create a bus dialog there if you wanted to just make one for grouping drums to or something. So you can do it there. There's loads of ways of doing it. Or again, the Command Shift N, and you can make a bus uh, that way. You know, using the arrow. Shortcuts. He really doesn't want to play guitar, Ben. He's doing everything he can to not play guitar right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so well. Here's the the final thing. Then is that I've got going to this is a Galaxy Tape Echo, right? Mm-hmm. Which has got a slap on it and some spring reverb. So now it feels more more we, what we'd expect. So this bus here is in arm as well. So uh, when it's not in arm mode, um, it no working. It no worky, and you see that send is grayed out because I'm this track is in arm and it's a DSP path for monitoring the guitar with uh, no sort of you know perceivable latency. So you, what we need to do is make the buses uh, like console buses. So we, if you're familiar with the Apollo console, we had FX one and FX two or AUX one, AUX two, two two buses. So you can have your comfort reverb and delay for tracking at low latency. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've done here. I've just nominated that Galaxy to be to be that in arm and that could be any bus in your session so if you need to overdub a vocal and you're 80 tracks into a mix you could just make a bus for that vocal vocalist to have some comfort reverb and make that one armed put an emt on it or something and then when you're done you can take it out of arm and it can be then offloaded to the satellite as drew says and you can be mixing uh, as a as a mix bus so yeah uh, that's it so i guess to wrap it up i should probably play some guitar (laughs) yes finally 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 So I'll just, you know, I'm gonna punch in and record there, um, which is command space bar or three on a numerical keypad. I'll try and play just a, a simple thing. Hands are mad slippy, but there you go. That's some <laughs> dodgy guitar. <laughs> dude, that's brilliant, man. This is. But there you go, dude. I mean, this is this is uh, you know the whole the whole idea here, right? Is to show, hey, this is how fast and easy it is to start, you know, coming up with ideas and making tracks and uh, and making songs inside of Luna. That's the whole reason that we put this out is so people are able to make music faster, easier, and have it feel and sound better than ever before. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, once you, for example, like loop a section and just put it in a loop record effectively, it will just create takes. So you could just leave that solo going and actually get into the headspace of it and then just take the best bit to comp it and go. So it's so quick. That's amazing. 
Well, Tom, man, dude, thank you so much for uh, taking us through this. I know, uh, you know, we're, we called this the Luna Office Hour. We're trying to hold ourselves to an hour. And uh, what's great is that we're actually going to be coming back uh, three more times today. Uh, so we're coming back again in about two hours from now and then again two hours after that. And then we've got a special one this afternoon at 4.30 uh, Pacific with Fab. Where he's actually going to be pulling up an entire mix session that he's done inside of Luna. And then he's going to bravely... Add, re, he's going to bravely replace the drums inside the session using ARM and show that you know even with a heavy you know a heavy bogged down uh, mix session you can still get in there uh, and you know do production elements again with just no perceivable latency. Um, so yeah, I would love to you know there's a million more things that we could kind of explore inside Luna, uh, but you know for all the people at home, uh, this is this is your opportunity now to uh, stop watching us use Luna and instead. Pull down Luna and start trying to make some stuff uh, for yourselves and then come back and join us in the next office hour uh, with more questions. And I know there's probably a zillion questions that we didn't get to in this session. Uh, but the, again, that's the whole point of us doing these over and over again is that uh, we're going to eventually get to almost all the questions. We've, we've got so much cool content planned for you guys. Uh, Drew's got some incredible segments. I've got some stuff I want to show you guys. So over uh, over this week and next week, we're going to keep on doing these as long as you guys keep on showing up to watch them. We're going to keep on uh, putting them out there and, and sharing what's really great about Luna. Uh, so, Tom, dude, thank you again so much for uh, walking people yeah, through thanks, this. Tom. And that was a really, really, really great demo showing off uh, shape and all the instruments. And uh, yeah, it's just it's very inspiring to see how quick and easy it is to uh, to come up with some tracks. And just yeah, a reminder for everybody, uh, just a little reminder for everybody. You know, make sure you're you're going to help.uaudio.com. We got great online documentation. That should always be your first place. You know, and we got a lot of questions in the chat. So if you uh, if you go there first and try and do some searches, maybe you can uh, get a jump start on some of the lower hanging fruit, and then and we'll try and tackle some of the bigger stuff. So yeah, yeah. awesome. Actually, it's worth mentioning as well, because I'll probably, in some of the other ones, when Drew's doing a segment, I'll be on chat too. So if you've got questions about what I've been doing, then feel free to sling them in and I'll try and pick them up on chat and vice versa. We'll all be sort of in the background of each other. So yeah. that's a great way for us to keep pushing it, pushing it on. Fantastic. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Well, uh, I'll let you guys uh, take a little bit of a break here. And uh, like I said, we'll be back in just under two hours with another uh, Office Hours. So uh, see you guys then.